Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is trachoma, again from medical surgical nursing. Trachoma also belongs to one of the eye disorders. And in this video, we will learn about features of trachoma, risk factors of trachoma, mode of transmission of trachoma, and management of trachoma. Let's get started. Trachoma is a granulomatous keratoconjunctivitis, which is caused by chlamydia trachomatis. This mainly affects children who are less than five years old. Trachoma can be highly contagious, that is transmissible, and there can be many routes of transmission. Some of them are through fingers, that is direct contact, towel, flies. Flies can be the vector for transmission. Trachoma is the leading cause of infective blindness in the whole world. More than 150 million people globally have been affected due to trachoma. Recent data shows that 59 countries, including India, are at high burden because there are many people who, who are below the line of poverty and who are having poor hygiene and inadequate sanitation in their environment. Risk factors of trachoma can be, first of all, 6D, that is dry. The body which is dry, eye which is dry, is susceptible to trachoma. Dusty, dust means environmental dust. Dirty, when, where there is lack of hygiene. Drug, some kind of drug makes the body less immunized or lowers the immunity of the body that, so that that child having that drug can be susceptible to trachoma. Next is discharge. Trachoma has a characteristic feature of discharge. Next is density. This can occur at area with a large crowd or large density of people. Another risk factor is age. Trachoma is seen more among infants. Among children also, mostly it is seen in infants. It is more common in female. It is common in the place where there is exposure to dry and dusty environment. Also, mostly seen in people with a low socioeconomic status and also seen in the place where there is a lack of hygiene with people. Transmission of trachoma can be through many ways. First is 5F, that is fingers, flies, face, feces and fomites. Through finger, direct contact, flies can be a vector. Also through face, that is anything that comes in touch with the face, anything that is like finger, like food, anything that comes in contact with face. And if flies touch the face too, then that can be a fruit of transmission, similarly feces and fomites. Also spread of infection can be through direct contact, airborne, waterborne, vector borne, and material borne. That means both living and non-living thing can contribute to transmission of trachoma. In pathophysiology of trachoma, we should actually explain the life cycle of chlamydia. To learn about life cycle of chlamydia, you need to know what is EB and what is RB. RB is a reticulate body, part of the blood, whereas EB is elementary body, which is a child form or little form of RB. That RB replicates inside a cell and becomes more in number. There is, after that, transformation of reticulate body to again elementary body, which after the lysis of cells releases in the body and reaches to every part of the body through blood. So first of all, there is a cell, there is elementary body that enters the cell that gets transformed into reticulate body. When it replicates, it again gets transformed into RB and EB. There is some RB reticulate body present. Also, there is many elementary body present. When the cell breaks down, that is lysis, all the elementary body is exposed to the whole part of the body. That is how sign and symptoms is seen. Clinical features. The incubation period of chlamydia is 5 to 21 days. It also depends on age of the child. Okay, if the child is infant, there are chances that child's immunity is just developing and child is susceptible to infections. So incubation period can be comparatively less. Onset of sign and symptoms can be subacute. 
acute is sudden sub acute is sudden but symptoms might disappear from the beginning phase but in massive outbreaks if it is if the outbreak is occurring in a large group then it can be acute symptoms can be discharge from the eye discharge might be whitish or yellowish in color foreign body sensation in the eye mucus prevalent discharge that is discharge which is solid solid in nature redness of the eye because of breakdown of blood vessels mild pain and blurring of vision this mild pain occurs in the whole or vital muscles signs can be redness of conjunctiva lesion development scarring of conjunctiva limbal follicles alt line and orbert's fits redness of conjunctiva is due to leakage of blood vessels there is lesion development because the same elementary body is spreading around and growing scarring of conjunctiva is because of friction friction created from the developing part limbal follicles can be present in the part of growth alt line and orbert's fits are shown here in the diagram as line is this line that is pointed by the arrow which is a characteristic feature of trachoma this little part which is black in color as shown in the diagram can be called as arbert's pit these are the pits holes so arbert's pit these two are characteristic feature of trachoma now signs in cornea specifically cornea and conjunctiva and eyelid suffer more in trachoma so signs in cornea can be first of all superficial keratitis due to tissue erosion and then after some time trachomatis pannus starts to spread in whole cornea there is also development of ulcers and corneal opacity cloudiness of lens corneal opacity signs in eyelid eyelid can be swollen edema trichiasis that is effect effect of trichom trichomonas <coughs> trichiasis dysphiasis and indropion first of all trichiasis develops in the part and which leads to dysphiasis we have a dysphiasis diagram in trichiasis what happens is i lead the abnormal i lead which is situated and maintained at a place that changes its angle in dysphiasis it moves slightly inward and in intropion we can see the eye lashes of lower eyelids is turning towards inner part of the eye which should actually turn towards the outer part of the eye because of which scarring occurs and at the end ptosis formation occurs trachomatous ptosis this is dysphiasis according to who classification of trachoma can be done as trachomatous follicular trachomatous intense trachomatous scarring trachomatous trichiasis and corneal opacity we will learn this one by one first of all trachomatous follicular it is the active form of disease there are five or more follicles which are above 0.5 mm on the upper tarsus also deep conjunctival vessels can be seen there will be no scarring if treated properly if this is treated at early phase just before or just during the beginning of follicular phase there will be no scarring because there will be no friction this is follicular when the condition is intense this is a severe form that needs urgent treatment now because there is involvement of tarsal conjunctiva and 50% or more of the part are already involved in the infection so in intense form there is a need of urgent treatment the intense form looks more red than the follicular form trachomatous scarring it is a inactive infection and there is conjunctival scarring always also visible fibrous white bands on tarsal conjunctiva whereas in trachomatous trichiasis we learned it in features also trachomatous trichiasis there is 
at least one eyelash that is touching the globe that is that means it, it is touching inner part of the globe and when it is trichiasis phase it needs corrective surgery only medicine only non pharmacological treatment is not sufficient this is trachomatic scarring when the tissue starts to create friction by rubbing against each other and this is trichiasis when these eyelashes turns inward towards the globe of the eye corneal opacity is blurring of vision this occurs when infection becomes so intense that it is sufficient to blur the details of least part of the pupillary margin this is opacity according to mccallan's classification there is next classification previous was who now this is mccallan's there are various stages the stages begins from incipient trachoma where there is hyperemia excess blood supply that continues with stage 2 where there is infiltration entry of microorganisms that continues with stage 3 in which there is cicatrizing trachoma that means friction has started and in stage 4 there is healed trachoma there is a stage where all the tissue debris moves outside and trachoma becomes healed it becomes healed when there is a proper prevention and treatment done at the stage 1 if stage 1 to are not treated properly there is no chance of healing for trachoma we can perform eye examination at the beginning before that we can obtain history that will come in the next point but first of all characteristically what we need to do is we need to examine the eye we need to find out which kind of infection is there there might be presence of follicles on the upper tarsal conjunctiva presence of harbor spit presence of tarsal conjunctival scarring also we can obtain conjunctival cytology we can perform immunity test elisa test to find out if there is any chlamydial antigen in the blood we can also obtain monoclonal microscopy that is obtaining the tissue and obtaining their clones monoclonal microscopy there is prevention preventive methods for trachoma this preventive methods starts from safe strategy safe strategy is safe safe which is also a part of national blindness control program that we learned in blindness here s in safe means surgery a antibiotics f facial cleanliness and e environmental change if the safe methods are applied properly then trachoma can be prevented prevented even before appearance also prevented at first stage of its appearance after that there can be correcting surgery like intropion trachiasis cryolysis electrolysis also antibiotics can be given because there is a pathogen which is causing the disease so to destroy that there is a antibiotic therapy next can be facial cleanliness because one of the mode of transmission was facial so facial cleanliness is required also environmental cleanliness there is airborne water borne transmission environmental transmission so environmental cleanliness is required for treatment first of all i said we need history we need history to find out what is the risk factor that patient is having first of all age if the patient is below 1 year below 5 year patient is a is at risk group after that occupation is there any occupational exposure to harmful things harmful chemicals after that we need patient's address to find out whether the patient belongs to a place where there is epidemic or not after that chief complaint and present complaint are important as a treatment we can give antibiotics there is triple therapy azithromycin tetracycline and doxycycline therapy after that topically also antibiotics can be applied we can apply i ointment tetracycline also sulfacetamide for pain we had pain we had discussed about pain in the orbital muscles we can provide analgesics as a prophylaxis 
that means after treatment what needs to be done at home after discharge what needs to be prevented or what needs to be started at home is personal hygiene and environmental sanitation after that we need to provide health education on every possible topics starting from hygiene till nutrition till safe drinking water and everything also patients should be provided knowledge that use of common towels should be avoided no matter disease is present or not present common towels use should be avoided also common anti use should be avoided clean drinking water and washing water should be clean if there is presence of flies presence of any kind of vector then insecticides can be used or garbage disposal should be done properly organic and non organic both garbage disposal disposal should be done pro properly and sewage what kind of sewage is it is it solid liquid sewage related to latrine or sewage related to kitchen everything should be maintained properly so that any of the vector which is present in the sewage should not disturb the food or health of the children recurrent infection in body might make the body more susceptible to any kind of transmission so that should be prevented if there is any kind of signs and symptoms if the person is in a place where there is epidemic of trachoma if there is any signs and symptoms it should be detected early also treated early so that for further time we can apply some interventions or some preventive measures get 2020 this is about global elimination of trachoma 2020 launched by who its main objective is to eliminate trachoma as blinding disease because the trachoma is leading cause of infective blindness to eliminate trachoma becomes its main objective the program is icpc international correlation of trachoma control here trachoma is aimed to be eliminated by less than 5% in 1 to 9 years and less than 1 per 1000 in total population thank you so much next topic will be discussed in next video